Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, the channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. All right, so I'm not tippy-toeing around this, I'm not mincing my words, I'm not going to be careful not to offend particular Republicans. I absolutely friggin' hate Lindsey Graham. I mean, really, I despise the guy. At this point, call me a conspiracy theorist all you want. The guy is paid opposition. There is nothing genuine about this clown, Lindsey Graham. He proves himself once again to be an absolute pro-Biden, anti-GOP voter saboteur. Joe Biden is taking the heat that he deserves, and guess who comes flying in to Joe Biden's rescue? It's none other than Joe Biden's little Robin, GOP Senator Lindsey Graham. I don't have any more metaphors or points or any context to add in the intro. This guy's just the worst, and let me show you guys exactly what I mean by that as we continue to criticize and slam this rhino snake, Lindsey Graham. We got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks. So anybody who's been paying attention knows that Joe Biden's garage gate classified document scandal is quite serious. Understanding all the revelations involving Hunter Biden, Jim Biden, their business dealings, the fact that Hunter Biden was actually living at the residence and paying rent, the total disregard for security and even having a visitor log, it's a real serious case. There's potential national security concern, potential criminal behavior. It's not just a small thing. In fact, Donald Trump's document scandal isn't even really a scandal, and it pales in comparison to what we're seeing here with Joe Biden, especially after documents were found, classified top secret documents, from his time as a senator. That shows a long storied history of breaking the law and a total disregard for national security and classified top secrets. That's the context. Anybody who's paying attention, any conservative understands that. Well, apparently not Lindsey Graham, this absolute friggin' clown paid opposition freak. Here's Lindsey Graham's take to the media. What are your national security questions? I just, what was, you know, what are, same thing for Trump. I mean, why did you do it? What were in the documents? How were they held? Who had access to them? Um, let me just say this. I've known President Biden for a long time. I don't think there's, I would be shocked if there's anything sinister here. I've known President Biden for a long time. I'd be shocked if there's anything sinister here. Why are you talking? Go away. A non-statement is better than that. I don't understand what purpose that serves. I don't understand the point. The point is, he is Joe Biden's ally. We know that. He's Joe Biden's best friend. If you can't admire Joe Biden as a person, then it's probably, you got a problem. <laughs> you need to do some self-evaluation. But of course, it's exactly what you'd expect from this guy. All he ever seems to do is backstab his own voters, his own party. He comes at the perfect time to essentially do the bidding of the Washington Uniparty. You know, Joe Biden isn't a Democrat camouflaged as a Republican doing the bidding of the Democrat Party. No, he represents the Uniparty. It's arguably even worse. But the timing is always so spectacular. It's always so convenient. With the overturning of Roe v. Wade at the Supreme Court, it wasn't exactly an issue that was helping with independent voters ahead of the midterm elections. You know, there was a lot of fear-mongering from the Democrat side that Republicans were going to try to pass legislation to federally ban abortions, which was never really the platform of the party. First of all, it would have been dead on arrival in the House and in the Senate. Democrats controlled both the House and the Senate at the time. There was zero chance that that bill was passing. It wasn't even on the GOP legislative horizon. Yet Senator Lindsey Graham, ahead of the election, decided that he would make a public little announcement, a little stunt, a little PR stunt, pushing that exact bill, doing exactly what the Democrats were fear-mongering Republicans were supposedly wanting to do. And he did the whole thing on his own. He acted on his own and sabotaged Republicans ahead of the 2022 midterms. This is what I mean by paid opposition freak. Now you have Joe Biden, who's essentially, I mean, sinking in front of our very eyes. All the hypocrisy, all the lies after the constant condemnation of Donald Trump and his irresponsible handling of classified documents. Documents, it turns out that he is much worse and much more guilty of the exact thing that he was pointing the finger at Donald Trump for. And then Senator Lindsey Graham, in perfect timing, comes in to save the day and set a narrative for the Democrats that probably Joe Biden didn't do any 
anything wrong. There's nothing sinister here, despite all of the circumstantial, compiled evidence suggesting that there is something very sinister, something criminal, happening at the Biden residence and in the Biden family in general. The whole structure is sinister-seeming from a collective evidence perspective. The totality, the macro-level view of what's going on with the Biden criminal syndicate. I cannot stand this guy. I mean, I literally cannot stand him. The exact opposite of what his voters, what his constituents want, is what he does. The moment there's falling support for this endless blank check perpetual war machine whatever's going on in Ukraine the moment the conversation starts to shift as people question should we really be involved there to the extent that we are Senator Lindsey Graham comes out and calls for us to send tanks to Ukraine shilling for the military industrial complex whatever GOP voters want this guy seems to do the exact opposite at the most inopportune times for the GOP and the most opportune times for the uniparty establishment there are two too many coincidences, and like I always say in my videos, coincidences almost don't exist in the world of politics. And here we go to coincidence number two. All of a sudden, we're getting reports that Mike Pence is now turning over classified documents in his possession to the DOJ. Well, would you look at that? Is the timing not perfect? Mike Pence, who has totally turned on Donald Trump, sees that Trump's getting a win in the media. Mike Pence has also announced that he plans on running for president. Clearly, he's a favored GOP establishment pick over Donald Trump, and so he sees that Joe Biden is in trouble with this whole classified document scandal from being a vice president at the time, taking documents with him, and very conveniently, very coincidentally, all of a sudden, Mike Pence turns over classified documents to the DOJ and it becomes a story. And this comes, by the way, after Mike Pence said this. Do you see any reason for anyone to take classified documents with them leaving the White House? Well, there'd be no reason to have classified documents, particularly if they were in an unprotected area. You take any classified documents with you from the White House? Uh, I, I did not. Um. Well, it's all just too convenient. There's no coincidences in the world of politics. I think this was planned. What most people are saying is that Mike Pence had taken documents with him. The National Archives and Records Administration was aware of this. He took those documents home because he was writing his book and he had authorization to do so, and he's simply giving them back, but they're not trying to craft this narrative in a way to justify, in a way to distract and defend from Joe Biden's current classified document garage gate scandal. You know, the same question I asked earlier, what purpose does all of this serve? How is the timing so perfect to benefit Democrats? You know, the Democrat narrative has been falling apart. They've been trying to convince you that after months of saying that Donald Trump is guilty, Donald Trump should be charged, he should be sent to federal prison, he's a traitor to the nation, he's selling American top secrets to foreign countries. After saying that for the last couple of months, all of a sudden they've been trying to justify that with Joe Biden there's a different standard and that it's somehow justifiable or you have to look at intent they keep saying. Joe Biden didn't even know. There was no malicious intent, they say, with zero evidence. Actually, here's a perfect example in this tweet right over here from TYT clown Jenk Uger. I can't stand Mike Pence or Donald Trump, so why am I not concerned about Pence taking classified documents? Because there is a near zero chance that Pence was going to do something illicit with them, like sell them, whereas Trump has a 95% chance of having that kind of bad intent. I have no idea where he got this whole less than 0% for Mike Pence and 95% plus chance for Donald Trump statistics. I mean, they just invent numbers, these Democrats, and present it as fact. But you know, this is the narrative. It's all about intent. Donald Trump is an orange man, therefore he's probably selling nuclear secrets. Joe Biden's just good old Uncle Joe. He would never do anything wrong. That's the narrative they've been trying to craft. Very disingenuously, it's been falling flat on its face, with over 60% of the American people believing that Joe Biden acted irresponsibly and possibly criminally in his hiding of classified materials for the last, I mean, probably over a decade, that narrative has been falling apart and all of a sudden Mike Pence and Lindsey Graham give the Democrats the exact ammunition, the exact argument, the exact stories that they need to start trying to convince some very gullible people that what Joe Biden did was no big deal. Well, look, Vice President Mike Pence did it, therefore, I mean, come on, uh, they're both vice presidents, so it's not a big deal. Oh, look, Lindsey Graham said that most likely Joe 
Joe Biden didn't have any sinister intent, therefore, no one will ever convince me that this isn't purposeful, that it's not sabotage, typical GOP sabotage from these typical GOP neocon uniparty saboteurs. The timing is too convenient. It's clearly purposeful, like it always is. It piles on to the already massive pile of evidence showing that these people have disdain for their own voters. They're working against the interest of their own voters. They're paid opposition. They're representing some sort of elite Washington class. They're merely political actors, not authentic elected representatives. In conclusion, I absolutely hate, I cannot stand Lindsey Graham. If this guy manages to squeak by in his next election, honestly, I don't know if there's much hope for the future of the GOP. At that point, I mean, I'll give up and there's just no more integrity. There is no integrity within the world of politics. It's all just a game. It's all just a mirage. It's a game. It's a party that you're not invited to. That's what I got for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, friends, and I'll see you on the next one.